spent much time in the outdoors in Arkansas, there's a high probability you've encountered Canada geese. But just exactly how many of these birds live in the state and where? Questions like that are the reason Arkansas Game and Fish waterfowl biologist Luke Naylor and his team are hitting the water today. But to count these geese, you first have to catch them. Yeah, these Canada Goose Roundups, which we don't round them up and take them anywhere, but we uh, do do round them up. Something unique to waterfowl is that they have a uh, they have a molt wherein they lose all their flight feathers. So they do have this this period of uh, over a month where they're flightless. We take advantage of that opportunity um, to, to capture these birds temporarily uh, to place bands on them. After years of trial and error, they've come up with a unique and effective way to round up the geese. Radio controlled boats. I don't know who it was who first tried this amongst my, my counterparts throughout the flyways, but we all got to talking here several years ago at a meeting and, and started thinking about the idea of radio controlled boats for rounding up geese. I, I would say one of the most effective tools for facilitating goose roundup uh, that we've seen in a while. Uh, geese, for whatever reason, they absolutely hate these radio controlled boats. Uh, and so you put one of those in the water and start running at them and they want to get the other direction really, really fast, even more so than a big 16-foot John boat. You think it would be opposite, but, but John boats, I don't know if it's because there's, they see a lot of tra traffic from fishermen all the time on some of these places. They're kind of desensitized to it, but these little RC boats, they hate them. Um, it is a little bit of fun to drive them. Now it comes together right here, Scotty. That's how professionals work. I, I can't lie. We've never, <laughs> yes, I have been involved in goose banding operations where we had losses and, and some of the boats did not make it back. Uh, well, at least intact. Um, I'm trying to think back. There may have been one that just was a complete loss over the years. Uh, mostly it's, it's just some level of damage. You have to be real careful about who you give the controller to. We've, we've offended, we've hurt a lot of feelings over the years, but I'm comfortable with it. You have to get a, at least an unofficial sign off from, from the co-coordinators here to be able to operate one of the RC boats, because uh, it's gone pretty bad uh, when we've handed them out to people that aren't prepared for the responsibility. <laughs> But make no mistake about it, while it may look like fun and games, these biologists are serious about the collection of data for these birds. Banding is the preferred method with most waterfowl. We ban Canada geese because there's really no other way to monitor their populations. So with ducks, lots of folks are familiar with the annual breeding population and habitat survey, where you get a good estimate of, of duck numbers throughout the, really the vast majority of the breeding grounds each year. We don't have anything like that for Canada geese, uh, largely because they're so scattered out across the country now. We use banding because it's a whole lot, we think, a lot more efficient in the long run for the relatively small goose populations we have uh, to be able to go out and, and just work for four or five days a year and, and ban a couple thousand geese and it gets us really good population demographic information. The data collected from these bands will help determine the population of the birds in Arkansas as well as their movements. But this method does require the help of hunters. It doesn't work unless hunters participate. It really is one of the very first citizen science projects in wildlife management, in, in my opinion. It's, uh, it's been going on for years and years, and, and we can ban all the birds we want to. Uh, but if somebody doesn't return those, it doesn't, if a hunter doesn't report an, an encounter when they shoot one of those banded birds, we really don't have much data. We just have on a piece of paper that we we banded, put this band on a bird and, and let it go on this particular day. So it's really, really important to get that information back. It's not something where we're generating population estimates every year in some sort of real time fashion, uh, not like the, the annual duck surveys. It, it's more that we can 
every year we can we can keep track of harvest uh, harvest rates survival rates and, and we can look at movements of birds in general and then every few years or so you can you can kind of more formally take a step back and calculate population indices from banding data. 85 is an adult male. The work of these biologists helps wildlife managers set seasons. In Arkansas, those hunting opportunities take place in September and again November through January. Now, most of those opportunities are targeted at uh, what we call temperate breeding Canada geese now. Not truly residents, they do move around a lot. Uh, of course, a lot of them do not move very far, but but they do have some movements. We call them temperate, temperate breeding Canada geese. That's in, in contrast to Arctic nesting Canada geese or subarctic nesting Canada geese. We used to have in Arkansas a, a lot more. Uh, really, we've lost that migratory connection over the years. Uh, geese in general are, are wintering a lot f farther north than they used to. And in Arkansas, it's over 95% of Canada geese harvested in Arkansas are temperate breeding Canada geese. It's actually Arkansas hatched birds, uh, Arkansas banded birds who are being uh, taken by hunters here.